me now is NYSC President Stacey Cunningham. Stacey, thanks for joining us. You know, there has been a course of people saying, close the market, G give, us, give us some time to, you know, help our families prepare and kids are now home from school. What is the case for keeping it open? Sarah, I think it's a really good question. I understand why people are asking it. The, they are concerned about the precipitous fall-offs and want that to stop. I think it's very important to understand that the underlying causes of the market sell-off would not change if we just stopped trading. And the market is a really good indicator of what investor sentiment is. So it's, it's helpful to have that there. And investors need to have access to their money. Also, if we close the equity markets, we would see selling appear in other, other parts of the overall economy that can have rippling effects. So it's really important to keep the markets open. But I want to take a step back and, and address why people are asking that question and why we're hearing it more often. I think there are probably many viewers that are tuning into CNBC today that might not be regular viewers of CNBC because this pandemic is really raising attention for so many about the overall hit to the, to the market. And so I just want to address them for a second because I think it's very important to understand that there's uncertainty in the market. And that's what we're seeing. Markets are not sure how the pandemic is going to unfold and what the impact on the economy is going to be. And, and that in investor anxiety, the everyday American anxiety is being reflected by the market. But we do know one thing. We will get through this and we will get to the other side. I've had the opportunity to meet with so many members of our government across city, state, local, federal, with our administration, uh, with our regulators, and with many CEOs and business leaders, and all of them have the same message. They're interested in helping. So right now we're focused on health and, and protecting Americans and protecting people in their workforce and protecting them uh, across the way. And then we'll turn our attention to the economy and how do we help the 401ks and how do we help the overall market recover. But just to this question, Stacey, I mean, what would it what would it take? What does history tell us about what what it takes to precipitate a market closure? So we have the ability to to if you're talking about closing the overall market, I, I don't think there's a reason to do it right now. We there have been some parallels drawn to other times in the market. At those times, the markets didn't have the ability to react remotely. So things like Hurricane Sandy or even on 9-11, on the markets didn't have the ability to open at that period in time. That's not the case today. And I don't think there's, we would be reducing anxiety by taking a pause in the market. So I, I don't see us considering that. In my conversations that I've had with our regulators and, and with the administration, we haven't been talking about closing the market. 9-11 was another one, obviously, a totally different circumstance. Stacey, the president just said you should limit interactions to groups of 10 people or less. Is there any discussion about closing the floor? I think you have a few hundred traders down here. Sure. I think that's an important distinction to make. There's a very big difference between closing the floor and closing the markets overall. We could close the floor and continue with the markets open and continue trading. We run five different equity markets. Four of them are fully electronic. The New York Stock Exchange remains open because we, our model leads to trading with less volatility. And that is even more significant when there's overall market volatility. So right now, the people on the floor are proud to come in and provide that service of, of helping to dampen volatility around the edge. Clearly, we're not going to stop the market from going down if it's going down. But preventing some of those outlier movements in stocks is value that this community adds every single day to their institutional clients and, and for the market makers to issuers and their investors. So the, the people that are coming in here to provide that service are really proud and very, feel very patriotic about the service that they're providing. Their safety is paramount. So we've increased screening coming into the building, as, as you've seen when you came in. We were doing temperature checks. Yep. We're providing for testing as necessary to check for the virus. We've introduced and increased social distancing on the trading floor. We've sent 700 people home, so they're not coming into the building anymore to reduce the number of people that are walking through the building. So we've taken a number of pre precautions, like sanitizing the floor over the weekend and like all these things I've just mentioned. But at this point in time, we don't have plans to close the floor. We can trade fully electronically if we did make that decision. We haven't yet gotten there. And Stacey, really quickly, since we did see the third circuit breaker triggered in the last week, just explain how effective this is, what, what you think it accomplishes. It, it, it takes a pause for 15 minutes. So what we've seen after each single one of those circuit breakers, if you saw this morning, the, the uh, SPY ETF, which is indicative of the uh, S&P index, was trading below 11% this morning as we were getting ready to open the market. 
And when we triggered that 7% decline and that 15-minute pause right at the open, it sort of slowed things down a little bit. So it doesn't stop the market from going uh, and pr moving down if that's where it's going to go, but it gives investors a chance to absorb information and assess the situation. We've seen them work the way they're supposed to work. Uh, we haven't triggered the 13% level decline, but those are, those are built-in protections mm -hmm. to just give investors time to absorb the information. They're working the way they're supposed to work, and, and we, we've triggered three in the past week, which is very unusual, but, but I, I think that's reflective of this unusual market yep. condition. Stacey Cunningham, thanks for joining us.